Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Star Trek Attack Wing, which is a new miniatures tactical tabletop battle game set in the Star Trek universe. Uh, it's based on a fairly popular gameplay system that I think uh, came out in a World War II dogfighting game called Wings of Glory. And last year, the same system was used in the Monster Mega Hits X-Wing miniatures game. And this year, we've got the Star Trek version. So, let's just jump right into it and show you how it plays. And I guess, actually, to a certain extent, you'll also be learning, watching this video, how X-Wing plays. I think I'll talk a little bit about what, what are the differences and all that. So the base set, which is all I'm demoing today, I don't have any of the expansions, all this game is really all about getting more and more ships to give you more flexibility. The base ship, base comes with a Federation Galaxy class, you know, Enterprise D, a, and a Klingon and a Romulan Warbird. And I'm going to do something funky today. Normally, I'm going I'm to play a two-player game, like always. And in a two-player game, generally, it would be a, you know, with just the starter set, it would be a one-on-one -on -one fight. But I think that's not going to be quite as exciting. So I'm going to do something a bit crazy. I'm not saying it's going to work out very well. What the heck, we'll give it a try. It's going to be a two-on-one -on -one fight. I'm going to be controlling the Enterprise, Captain, by Jean-Luc right there. And... I'm going to be going up against the combined forces of the Romulan and uh, Klingons over there, who Jen will be controlling. Although, of course, Jen is not really playing, but you know how it is. You know how, if you've watched my videos before, you know how this goes. So, uh, Jen is my real life wife, and I just use her, because uh, I, I always play against her anyway, so I just say, okay, Jen does this, I do that. Anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's just jump right into it. Now, uh, first thing that happens is you set up the battlescape. And now this battlescape is going to, you can see this line on our glass table. It's going to be this whole section. It's really supposed to be a three by three. This is not quite three feet deep, but you know, it's more than three feet wide. So it'll have to do because that's the table I got. But really you're supposed to have a three by three table. So that's three feet by three feet. So I don't quite have that, but it'll do. And we're going to play with the planet. It's got two sides. I prefer the Class M side because it looks nicer. And what the heck, I'm, just, I'm throwing out all the obstacles. The game comes with these objective slash obstacle cards. And I'm going to put them out there as like, you know, a derelict ship and a debris field and stuff like that. Just so we've got a little bit more stuff to kind of dodge around as we pilot through this sector of space. And like I said, I am going to be controlling the Enterprise. Jen is going to be controlling the Romulan and the Klingon who are out to destroy me. And now you'll notice, uh, every, I've already put the captains on these. So this is a generic Klingon captain. He has initiative one, a named Romulan captain. What's her name? Toreth, there's a card over there. She has initiative seven. And good old Jean-Luc, he's got an initiative nine. I'd rather have Kirk, but Jean-Luc will do in a pinch, of course. If Kirk were here, it'd be no problem, but we'll see what Jean-Luc can pull off. All right, he's got an initiative of nine. So that means he has the advantage by getting to see where the enemy positions themselves first. Everybody has to position on their side of the table within one section. You can see this section. So Jen, uh, Jen I think first she has to place her Klingon. She'll put it over here. All right, around there, give or take. And she'll go ahead and put her Romulan over here, let's say. And she could put them right next to each other, but she's kind of hedging her bets, hoping that she can kind of get me in a pincher move or something like that. Um, we'll see how that goes. Now I can see what they've done, and so I basically get to choose mine. I've got the same. I have to be within, you know, one little section. And this is all outer space as well. I just don't have enough space for the cards. So I'm actually in outer space right now, just using the cards. And I think, I think I'll go on ahead and put the Enterprise like this, kind of pointing, clearly signaling my intent to go for the Klingon, although there is going to be this, this debris or whatever this is. Oh, it's Deep Space Nine or an abandoned space station in the way. Okay. So I have now set up and we're ready to start playing. But before we do, a big, big part of this game is equipping your squadron or your, your fleet or whatever it's called. I think it's called a, a fleet in this game. I'm playing a 60 point game right now, which means I have 60 points to spend and Jen had 60 points to spend. And so I went crazy and I totally decked out the Enterprise as best I could. Let's look at what I got here. Like I said, I got 60 points. So first of all, I chose the Enterprise D. I could have actually taken a different card, the just the uh, Federation Star Trek Galaxy class, but you see, it costs 26 points instead of 28, but for 20, two more points, I get the ability to fire 360 degrees. I lose that with the standard one. And also, I've got one more shield. I think otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Oh, and I can't upgrade as much. I can only take four upgrades. The Enterprise can take five. So, uh, definitely worth spending the two extra points to get the full-on Enterprise. Let's see. And as you can see, I've got several upgrade slots. Every ship takes a captain. It's required. But then I can have three additional crew and two upgrades, two weapon upgrades. 
So it's okay. Obviously, I, got, I took Picard. He cost me six points. So now I'm at 34 points. I took Commander Data. There he is. Cost me three points. He's really great. Gives me a lot of defense if I need it in a pinch. It's Jordy, uh, four points. He can basically pump up, um, you know, if, if, I, if I'm running sensors, I can do more damage to, potentially, or definitely, or potentially. And now here's a little bit of an odd thing. I've got a Klingon, Conmel. I've taken him, even though he's a member of the Klingon faction, I'm putting him on this Federation starship, but I have to pay one, so instead of him costing four, he really cost me five points. Uh, that's what happens when you mix factions. You can do it, but it costs you a little bit more. So he cost me five, and he's great because he can repair shields, and Two to one, I am definitely gonna to need to be repairing my shields in this game. Continuing on, uh, let's see, so those are my three crew members I've put on. I got two weapons, I got photon torpedoes, five points, uh, Federation, it lets me shoot from the rear, which is nice, in case I'm running away, which I think I'll be doing a lot of. And I also took the Romulan technology plasma torpedoes, which cost me six points instead of five. So, I mean, it's kind of nice. The plasma torpedoes are short range. They're two to three, and the photons are, or I'm sorry, are one to two, and then the photons are two to three, so I kind of have a nice wide range of torpedoes if I need them, and torpedoes do a lot more damage, or they, you know, they hit five, they can, and they actually get to convert dice and stuff like that. And then finally, got a bonus. All my weapon slots and crew is filled up, but since Captain is a prestige, I think that's the term, character, he's got this little icon, that means I can take one of these as well. So I'm going to take the engage action, which is an extra thing I can do. And that's my 60 point fleet of one. Now looking at Jens, since she's got two ships, she didn't get quite as much stuff as me. Let's see, first of all, she took a, she didn't take the special, she took a standard Romulan starship and a standard Klingon starship, so it doesn't have any of the special abilities, and you know, has fewer upgrades, etc, etc. And, let's see, these are cards just indicate how these ships can move around. I'm just keeping those handy for me. Let's see, so she did get a named Klingon captain, though, uh, Tereth, who can convert her regular hits into critical hits, which is pretty nice, or for her anyway. But she has a standard bog standard Klingon captain who has the really low initiative of one and costs zero points. And then she also had a little bit more, so she also put Clag on the Klingon ship and Borcha, or Bakra, or whatever on the and these guys are pretty much the same thing. These guys have the ability. Once my shields are down, Jen can beam these guys over to my ship and eliminate one of my crew. So I got to watch out for that. If I, my shields are down, I got to keep my distance, or I'll start having my crew knocked off by these assassins. So that's Jen starting fleet. A little bit less, but you know what she lacks in you know neat special power, she makes up for in gun power because she'll be shooting twice to my once every turn. And I'm going to have to be smart to even have a chance. All right, so anyway, that was the setup. A 60-point fleet versus another 60-point fleet. Let's go. Now, every turn follows a really simple play order. It's all right here on the back page of the manual. So really, really easy, nice and convenient. So first thing that happens in a game round is the planning phase. Each player secretly plans their ship's maneuvers by signing them on the dials. Then we activate next. So let's talk about the dials. Jen's got one for her Klingon one for her Romulan, and I've got one for the good old Enterprise. And what we're going to do, we're all secretly, we can, you can see we can rotate these things to choose a different path that our ship is going to fly. I could just fly straight ahead, five spaces, just full speed ahead. Uh, Mr. Crusher, is Crusher? Yeah, he's Hamilton. All right. Or, uh, okay, Ro, uh, you know, Ensign Laren, if you'd prefer. Uh, although really should be Ensign Roche, and, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, or, uh, interestingly, the Enterprise has a special move. It can move backwards. Actually, if I, I don't have to look through the dial. I can look right here. Here's what all I can do. I can move forward five, move forward four. I can move forward three or bank left or right. Although banking hard left and hard right is a, it requires auxiliary power. That's what the red means. So it can kind of put me at a disadvantage if I have to do those moves. I can, moving two spaces, I could bank or move forward. And then, you know, in one space, I can bank or move forward. And I can also move backwards one or two spaces. I'm the only ship who can do that. The, oh wait, no, that's not true. The Romulan ship can too. The ship, the Romulan ship can move backwards too. And otherwise it has pretty much kind of the same as me, but just a little bit less flexibility. The Klingon though is a bit more agile Klingon can actually do a 360. Can't move backwards, we can do a 360, and can move side to side a little bit better than the other ships. Has a little bit more flexibility. Can can take a you know hard right or soft rights, or you know a hard right at two without auxiliary power, or a hard right at three with auxiliary power. So anyway, so we all have a little bit, and now we all secretly choose. And so Jan, you know, she'll let's see what she's gonna do. Uh, you know, she's secretly choosing this, but she just wants to come at me hard and fast. So she's gonna move forward as fast as she possibly can. Klingon doesn't have a high, the highest speed, so she's going to secretly choose charge, move forward four. 
puts that face down while waiting for everybody else to choose. But she also has to choose for the Romulan. And now, since she sees that the Enterprise is going to head towards the, the Klingon, I think she's going to bank off and you'll know, probably try to come through here and thread the needle between the planet and this space station over here. She's going to come off this way, which means, let's see, she's got to come right. Let's see. And now you can see, here's what all these things are. You can see how we bank hard or soft or go straight. You can't use these. You have to kind of guesstimate where you're going to, you can look at those things, but you can't, she can't actually say, what would a one be? Oh, it would do this. You, you can't do that. You can't measure ahead of time. You just have to take your best educated guess. So her educated guess is, because she wants to thread the needle between here, she's going to do, I think, she's going to do, she's going to do a soft two. Yeah, she's going to do a soft two two left, or she's gonna bank to port, where is it, it's in here somewhere, uh, two. So she's secretly chosen hers. Now I don't know what it is yet, but I gotta choose mine as well. And here's where I'm gonna throw them for a loop right off the bat. I set this up so it looks like I'm going for the Klingon, but I'm gonna zig when they thought I was gonna zag. I'm gonna try and come around and slingshot around the planet and get them from behind, because I'm hoping they expect me to go this way. So I am actually gonna start out with a, um, a soft, Le left or a soft port. So I'm going to head off in that direction. All right. And so everybody is chosen. We've all chosen our secret things. We put them face down. And now we do the activation phase where every ship, one at a time, based on initiative, moves and performs one action. And it's in ascending order of the captain skill. Each ship reveals their maneuver by all, executes the chosen maneuver, and then immediately performs one action. And there's a bunch of different actions you can choose. We'll come to that in a second. So that means the weakest captain, which is the Klingon, lowly level one, has to move first, which puts him at a slight disadvantage. So, Jen reveals what the Klingon's doing. Uh, as expected, Klingon's never very surprising. He's gonna come straight at me four. So let's get the four. This is as fast as the Klingon can go. And the way I do this, it's gonna be tricky with one hand, put him down here at the base. You can actually see all the bases have this little slot that you're supposed to put it into. I'm gonna kinda, there we go. So I put it in. And now, without moving this, so it's nice to have two hands because I can hold this in place so it doesn't move, but I pick up the Klingon and put it over here, and boom, that is his new position. That's what the Klingon did this turn and put this back over here. Alrighty, and now the Klingon gets to do one action before anybody else goes. So let's look at the Klingon ship's card. Now, First of all, Clag, who's on the ship, has an action. But again, um, if, if the Klingon isn't cloaked, he can, take the, he can turn off his shields, target a ship that's close by, and has no shields. I, if I have no shields and, that, and the Klingon ship is close to me, Clag, you basically discard Clag and also destroy one of my crew. So Clag beams over and takes out one of my crew. This is an action, but obviously that's not going to happen. What do you expect a Klingon to do in this case going into battle? You guessed it. He's going to, he could take evasive maneuvers. He could try to lock on, but he is going to cloak. And later on, he'll probably start doing the sensor echoes as well. So these are the four actions you can choose from. He's going to cloak. So let me get out a cloak token. And I put it on the ship to indicate that the Klingon is entering cloaked. Now that means he has, it's much harder for me to hit this Klingon right now. But if I want to, I could still get a target lock before he completely disappears. By the end of the turn, he'll be fully cloaked and then I can't target lock him anymore. So anyway, so he's cloaked. That he's moved and he's done his action. End of the Klingon's turn. Now it's the Romulans, because the Romulan is at seven, so they got to go next. So Jen reveals the Romulan, and she can see the Romulan is banking, because it's trying to come around this way, so they can you know, stick together. And let's see, and what is that? That's the soft two, so we take the soft two, put it here. Okay, pick the Klingon up, move her, or the Romulan up, move her over, boom. All right, and now the Romulan can also do an action, and really the Romulan has pretty much the same, could take evasive maneuvers, no reason, the ships are so far away, can't target lock because everybody's too far away from each other, so the Romulan is also going to cloak. By the way, uh, the Romulan starts with three shields, the Klingon starts with two shields. I should say, when the Romulan, when anybody cloaks, the Klingon had two shields, but as soon as you start cloaking, boom, they are deactivated. So, if I could get to the Klingon and get within firing range, I could fire at the Klingon right now and he has no shield, so I could do direct hull damage, which would be awesome. But since he's cloaking, he'd be much harder for me to hit. And it's too late, I've already decided what I'm gonna do anyway, so let's go on ahead and do that. Anyway, so, so the Romulan is now cloaked as well. Both their shields are down, but they're much harder to hit. We'll get to that in a minute. 
So now I reveal mine. Everybody's expecting me to come on because I aim this way and all that, but nope. I'm zigging. So I'm going to do a bank in this direction. Hello. And so that puts me up here. Okay. And now they're wondering, what the heck am I doing? What is, what's, what's Picard up to? Oh, Picard's a wily one, isn't he? Now, I get to do an action as well. Both of them, they just cloaked. I'm going to do something else, because as you can see, i got a whole bunch of actions I can do. First of all, the Enterprise lets me do evasive maneuvers. Not necessary because everybody's too far away. See, actually, I think, yep, uh, this, is the, this represents the maximum anybody can shoot. Cannot reach. No shooting. So not going to take evasive maneuvers, not going to target lock, because you have to be within range to target lock as well. Now, I could do a sensor scan, which would give me more offensive power, but I'm not going to bother with that, because again, I can't shoot. I could also go to battle stations, which is a nice variable thing. It can give me more power offensively or defensively, but I'm not doing any of these actions. Instead, I'm going to do the engage action, I believe. Yes, I am. Okay. Which says, if, oh, whoopsie, whoops, oh, shoot, 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 right off the bat. The engage action means I have to perform a green maneuver. I was stupid. I performed a white maneuver because I went two. I should have gone one. Ah, oh, already I'm screwing up. Actually, to make sure this worked right, I'm sorry, I did a one. I did a green maneuver. This is where I was. I did a green one, which means I actually didn't go quite as far as I thought. I went like this. Whoop. Okay. So that was my move, and now I'm going to do an action. Okie doke. And... Action. If you performed a green maneuver, which I did, duh, you may immediately perform an additional green maneuver and then place an auxiliary power token. So I get to move twice. That's very, very valuable for me. As long as I do small moves, because you can see my greens are the smaller ones, but I can move twice. So I'm going to do another green maneuver, which is going to be ahead three. All right, so let's get the ahead three. I come straight at this planet. Zoop. Staying close to the planet, because the planet can block line of sight. Now, I'm coming really dangerously close to hitting. I don't have to worry about that next turn. So, my action was I moved a second time. And, remember, the engage says I have to put an auxiliary token. So, that means I've gone to auxiliary power, which could cause traumas for me. Because, basically, when you have auxiliary power, you cannot do any more red moves. So, I can't do any of these red moves, and you can't do any more actions. So, and that's unfortunate because Jean-Luc Picard's special ability is he gets to do a free action. Normally, I would get to do a free action right now, but because I have done this, I can't do a free action, which is too bad because now, let's see, I'm actually I'm within range. I am within range, so I could do a target lock, but since I'm under auxiliary power, I can't do my free action anymore, so I can't target lock on the Warbur, on the Romulan, before it goes completely cloaked. Oops, and I forgot to put a cloak token on it. DTT, here's its cloak token. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh well, say la vie. But that, okay. Now, we have all done our activation. We've all moved and then done an action. Now we move on to combat. And each ship in, in reverse order. Now, because Captain Picard has the highest initiative, he gets to shoot first. Picard always shoots first. And unfortunately, well, actually, wait a minute. Can he? No, he can't quite. The wait, 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 actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, I think we can. There's clearly within range. Now, like I said, the only thing that blocks line of sight, ships don't block line of sight, these obstacles don't block, although they, they um, create, they, they add to the defensive value. The planet does block line of sight, but if I can draw a trace of line from anywhere on my base to the Romulan base, then it does count as I can shoot. So I'm touching. Oh, shoot, I'm right on the hairy edge. Right on the hairy edge. Can't touch the planet. Let's see, did it touch the base? Yes, it did. Oh, just barely. That is nice, that is nice. Okay, I get to have a shot off the bat because just barely right around the planet. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack. Now, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't think about this. Nope, the Klingon is still out of range, cannot shoot me. And, however, what this means, let's see, it might mean that the Romulan can fire back. But the Romulan, nope, the Romulan can't because of his angle. You can see every ship has this little angle, so the shot has to fall within that range. Oops, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Very easy to bump them. The rules actually recommend you play on felt or something so they don't bump quite so much. But anyways, you can see within that range, oh, wait a minute, maybe you can. I think you can, yes. Actually, the Romulan and the Enterprise will shoot at each other. Yes, they will. Okay. 
just barely right around the edge of the planet. So we are going to have a little bit of fireworks in the first round. Now, Picard gets to go first, so let's jump right to it. Now then, um, let's see, is there anything? Oh, it's such a shame because I'd really like to do an action like target lock on this guy before I shoot because it would um, you know, allow me to reroll dice or take evasive actions, but I can't because I'm auxiliary power, I can't do any action. So anyway, but I am going to shoot. Now, let's look at the Enterprise. My default shots are four. That's if I'm firing out of my forward arc. I can fire anywhere, but then I only get to ra roll three at 360 degrees. So I'm going to get to roll four dice. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Bop. That is lame. Oh, that's so terrible. Okay, what I get? I got one hit, a miss, a miss, and battle stations. Now, if I had chosen the action battle stations, I could now convert this into another hit if I wanted, but I didn't. So basically, three misses and one hit. Lame. Okay, now the Romulan gets to defend itself. So I got to look at the Romulan's shields, which is two, so he gets to roll two. But since the Romulan is also cloaked or going into cloak, he gets to roll four more. So that's really six. Plus, since the distance is so great, it's in the three, he gets to roll another one. So the Romulan is going to get two for his base shields, plus four for cloaking, plus one for a really distance. He's going to get to roll seven defense. I don't think my one hit is going to make it through, but let's give it a try. So here's five. I get to roll two more afterwards. All right, that was a fail and a fail. Let's roll them again for the seven total. All righty. And as you can see, these are the dodge, or whatever you want to call them. So dodge twice, only got one hit, so I did not hit. Didn't really expect I was going to. Shooting that far away at a cloaked ship, it was just a Hail Mary. I didn't have a chance. But anyway, so that was my attack. Now the Romulan gets to fire back. The Romulan's basic shots are three, so he's going to get to roll three. And I'll watch it be all hits, of course. Okay, not too bad. One hit, one miss, and a battle station, which doesn't do the Romulan any good. Interestingly, the Romulans cannot go into, or can they? No, they cannot go into battle stations. They gave up battle stations to be able to cloak and stuff like that. So, one hit coming from the Romulans. Now, my defense, my default is one, because I'm a very slow, laborious ship that is gigantic and easy to hit. So, I've only get to roll one, but since we're really far away, I get to roll two. Oh, and now I'm really wishing I had taken uh, evasive maneuvers, but I couldn't. I just got to roll. Although, unfortunately, I only have a, I think it's a three. There's one, two, three. I have a three and eight chance on each of these dice to get a dodge. Come on, give me a dodge. Give me a dodge. <sighs> one dodge. Okay. Just barely scraped by. So I didn't take any damage. Okay. So that was combat. And now the Klingon will get to go, but he's too far away, so he cannot shoot. And that was the end of combat. Now we move on to end phase, where basically we clean stuff up. Um, yeah, see. So if I, if, if I had tried to do a scan, my scan would go away, you know, stuff like that. The main thing that will happen right now is they upgrade from partially cloaked to fully cloaked by moving them off like this. That means now I cannot target lock them anymore because they are fully cloaked. All right. That was the end of the first round. Now we go back to we go to the second round and we start planning again. And everybody starts playing with their wheels, blah, 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 to try and figure out which way they're going to go. And now I've kind of thrown them for a loop. They thought I was going to go this way. I'm coming around trying to get them from the side because I'm the only ship that can shoot laterally. They have to get me in their sights. So I think the Klingon is going to try and come in this way. The Romulan, what's the Romulan going to do? <clears throat> now the Romulan could do a, a short turn, a small turn like this to try and, and, and anticipate. And then, you know, we'd be running right into each other. We'd just be going head to head. And, um, do, do, do. Yeah. So that'd be kind of nice. Now, you know, the Romulan is still cloaked. If you, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. The Romulan did fire. I'm sorry. Because the Romulan fired, uh, at the end of the turn, when the Romulan fired, he broke his cloak. So he flipped this like this. And at the end of the turn, the cloak is completely gone. Sorry. And the Romulan's shields are back up. Totally forgot about that. So the Romulan is at full shields, not cloaked. The bird of prey is cloaked. It's going to be harder for me to hit the bird of prey because it's cloaked. Also, the bird of prey is the toughest ship out here. It does five. It's to roll five dice. The Romulans, though, they're wide open because they shot at me. So I think, 
I want to stay away from this Cleon. I can't hit him. He'll hit me hard. It's going to take him a while to come around, so I think I am going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm going to continue on forward and try to hit this Romulan. So, let's, let's figure this out now. Of course, I could, it's kind of, you know, I could do all the thing. Okay, the Romulan chooses this, the Cleon chooses that. But I'm just going to, since I'm choosing all these myself, I'm just going to reveal them. I'm not just going to use the wheels, because you get an idea how the wheels work. So, the Klingon reveals first, and the Klingon reveals that he um, is coming in at a hard three to the right. So here he comes. This is what he's doing. Okay, and you can see he lines up for a perfect shot, and the cloaking symbol moves with him. Alrighty, but he doesn't get to shoot right now. He does not. However, he can still do an action. Remember, you move and then you do an action. Now he's already cloaked, so. He can't cloak again, but let's look at what else he can do. He could take evasive maneuvers. If he thinks I'm going to shoot at him, he could basically say evasive maneuvers, which gives him this extra token, which will automatically cancel one damage if, you know, if he's worried. But you know, he's already got cloaks. He's probably not worried about that. He could target lock, which gives him more power for future attack rolls in the future. Also lets him do torpedoes, not that he has any. Or he can't cloak, but he could do a sensor echo. Sensor echoes are a very, very cool system. What they do is, what it means is if he chooses to do a sensor echo, what is revealed is this is not where he is. We thought this is where he is, but he gets to reveal that he actually gets to be over, he can move one or two spaces left or right. So he could actually be over here. And you know, that can be a really powerful move when you've lined everything up, you think they're in your sights, you're gonna nail them, but then nope, boom, I was over here the whole time and now I can hit you and you can't hit me. So he could sensor echo, which might be nice because it puts him over here and so he could come more widely because he figures I'm gonna keep going in this direction. So a sensor echo would give him a little bit more flexibility to fly around the planet. Otherwise, he's gonna have to come pretty sharp. But I think he's not going to. Instead, he's gonna take advantage of the fact that he could do a target lock right now because he's within range. I think a target lock, yeah, it just has to be within firing range. So he's gonna do a target lock, which automatically succeeds, which means I put the target lock icon on the Klingon ship's marker. And I put the red half of it, the red A, on me. I am now target locked by whoever has this A, which is the Klingon ship. So he's target locked me. And that was his move. Now the Romulan reveals their move. And what was the Romulan going to do? I think the Romulan um, is going to... Now Romulan knows he wants to come around this way. If we look at what the Romulan can do, he could do... Okay, he, he could do a hard 90 degree, but that would not do any good. He's going to do a soft... I think it's only going to be a one. It's either going to be a one or a two. And you can kind of eyeball, but it can be tough. Because if he goes too hard, he could run into the planet, which would stop him in his tracks and prevent him doing action. So I think he's just going to do a soft one. Yep, there we go. And he, oh, it's actually still putting him dangerously close to the planet. Maybe he should have done, you know, the hard right, which is a, is it a two? No, he could have done a hard right, which would have gotten him more free and clear of the planet. But, see, that's the tricky thing. I guess as you play the game more and more, you can start to really visualize these things in your head, but you don't get to peek. He took an educated guess, doing a soft right for one, and as you can see, put him up against the what's it? That puts him, he's actually, oh, that was a bad move. That was some bad piloting on the part of the Romulan. Next move, I don't think it's possible. Yep, he is going to nudge the planet, which is gonna put him in a slight disadvantage. Okay. He really should have taken that harder right, but you know, that's, that's the tricky stuff. Okay, and now me, I'm going to reveal my and what I did. Let's see, where was it? Okay, I was basically, now, here's the thing. Because I'm under auxiliary power, I can't do any actions, and I also can't do any of my red moves, so I can't do any of those things. I can do white ones, but that means I'll still stay under auxiliary power, and it'll block my ability to do actions. So instead, I'm going to do a green action, because a green action will allow me to eliminate this auxiliary power, and then I can start doing actions again. So my green action would either be to move forward, but instead I'm going to bank soft as well. And as you can see, I come close, but I skimmed the surface of the planet, but I didn't quite hit it. However, this is going to be bad for me. I am right in the Klingon's line of sight. This is going to be ugly. But the important thing is, boom, I dropped my auxiliary power because I did a green action. Now, oh, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot. Before I did my action, the Romulan moved and then he got to do an action. I think he also, well, now he could, or I should say she, because it's a female captain, she could cloak, um, or she could target lock, or she could take evasive maneuvers. 
Now she knows I'm, she's going to take evasive maneuvers, I think, because she doesn't want to take any damage. So that was the action she did. She took evasive maneuvers. He target locked. She took evasive maneuvers. And now it's my turn. I've moved and I get to do an action now. Now if I wanted, I could engage again and get the hell out of dodge. That might make sense. Because if I just move a little bit farther forward, I will be out of the firing arc. See, I did, I wanted to do something else. I really, I was hoping to, um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a good move. I'm gonna do two actions. First of all, I'm gonna use um, Jean-Luc's, you may perform the following actions as a free action each round. I can do any of these for free. These match the normal things I can do. Let's see, I'm not going to take evasive maneuvers because after I engage, I'm not going to be shot at. I think, and since he's not target locked, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I could take battle stations, which would help me on offense or defense. I could take the scan, which means Jordy could do his power, or I could target lock, which lets me reroll or fire photon torpedoes, which would let me hit harder. Now I know I'm gonna engage, so I'm gonna move on, which means I'm gonna shoot at the guy ladder. I could move on this way, but then I don't think I'd get out of his target. I need to move on this way. But I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna engage after I do my action. So I think, since he's not cloaked, I am, let's see, it's either target lock or Jordy. I wanna hit this guy hard. And since he has given himself an evasive maneuver, I'm gonna use Jordy's ability. So I am, Picard is going to do a sensor. It's going to run sensors. So I put this on here. And what that means is, if I look over here, scan. Place a scan beside the ship. During the combat phase, any ship attacked by the Enterprise now rolls one less die. So he'll get one less die for my shot because I'm scanning him. And Jordy's special ability is not only will we get one less die, but I can force him to re-roll one die as well. So this might be my chance to hit the ramen hard. But I've done my free action from a card, and now I'm going to do my regular action, which is engage, which means since I did a green action, I'm going to do another green action. Let's see. And I think, let's see. Now, I, well, i got to choose. I have to choose one that will get me out of this arc, so it has to be past this line. But I can't put the thingies down to measure it. I would like to do a soft bank, but I'm worried that won't make it. So I think I'm going to do... Do I do a straight ahead two or a straight ahead three? If I do a straight ahead three, I'm going way off into the boonies. And I'd have to come swing around this way. Oh, but I think, I think a one will get me. I think it will. I'm gonna do a soft right bank. So I'm engaging, which means I, I go into auxiliary power again, so I can't, I mean, I'm put in that situation. I put it up here, and yep, I am out of the Klingon's line of sight. Okay, or I'm sorry, not the, the Romulan's line of sight. And the Klingon can't get at me either because he's on the other side of a planet. Things are going pretty well so far. All right, and those were my actions. I move all my stuff. I'm still sensing, I'm still on auxiliary power, and I'm still target locked by the Klingon. This, Kling, this target lock will never go away until the Klingon uses it. All righty, so now we go on to attacking. K Picard gets to attack first, and Picard, the Enterprise, instead of making a normal attack with your primary weapon, you may fire in any direction at range one or two. So if I'm close, I, can, I get only three dice instead of four, but I can shoot sideways, and I am well within. So, kapow, I get to roll three dice on, on the Romulan, who just sits there like a chump. Oh my god, so lame. I got one critical hit. Not so great, all right, shoot. Let's see, now, yeah, if I'd gone to battle stations, it wouldn't have done me any good because I didn't get battle station rolls. Huh. If I had Worf on board, he lets me re-roll my attack, but I don't have him. So, say la vie, it was just a bad roll. I got one hit. Now, the Klingon, it's his defense is two, so he gets to roll two dice. So, see, here's my hit. Let's roll the Klingon's dice, see what he does. Uh, ooh, bad news for the Klingon, both. Both, wait, 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 I forgot though. Um, because I had scanned, normally he gets to roll two, but he only gets to roll one because of my scan. And it was a fail. So hooray! Um, you know, uh, you know he, he did not take his, you know, his shields didn't protect him, his maneuverability. I can do one damage, except, remember, he took evasive maneuvers, or she took evasive maneuvers. So, she will discard this, not canceling my one hit. So, because those evasive maneuvers, I completely missed. I mean, I missed my big shot. That was unfortunate. Now, it's everybody else's turn. Let's see. Can the Romulan hit me? Nope, I am outside of his range. The Klingon can't on the other side of a planet. So everybody else is done firing, and so now we clean up at the end. 
My sensor is done. I, you know, it only lasts one turn. Still cloaked. And right, okay, so that's it. And we move on to the third turn, and we all secretly plan and plot our moves again. But if you'd like to watch that, you can go on ahead and hit the button that's on screen right now for extended playthrough. I'll keep playing for a few more turns until, at the very least, I draw some blood and um, see how far this goes. Actually, I'm doing pretty good right now. Although, yeah, this was a really bad move. If the, if the Romulan had taken the hard, you know, the hard instead of the soft, he would have gotten to fire back. Now he's going to bump into the planet. But anyway, you can watch the uh, you know that mistake play out in the extended playthrough, or you can go to final thoughts. Your choice. In five, four, three, two, one.